Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're going to make R2's head spin. Hey everybody, welcome back to part four of the R2-D2 build. I want to give you a quick run around of where he's at in case you haven't watched the previous three videos. This is an R2-D2 built in a styrene plastic frame. He's got aluminum skins glued to the outside. Then his legs are made out of some stacked styrene plus some 3D printed pieces and some machined aluminum pieces. The legs are in place. They have wires going down to the feet so that we can hook up motors. I've also worked on getting all the paint on. I've got all of the pieces that are gonna be blue painted. I've got most of the pieces that are gonna be white painted. And also in the last video, we got the dome really far along. I've got some lights in it now. I've got most of these panels put on. We just have to put in the panels on the top. With the lights in place, we've got some LEDs run to all the different hollow projectors and everything. So this is now ready to be put in place and motorized. One of the big things that I want to do is to get the head to spin. I cut out this gear on the CNC. This is out of styrene. We also made some little motor mounts. And these were all files that I found online for free. So we've got this motor mount mounted onto this motor, which is offset. It's kind of weird. But this is made specifically so that you can put on a little piece here and then put on a gear right on top of that. Then this will get mounted inside. And as this gear spins, it will spin this. This will be attached to a Lazy Susan. And that should make the whole head spin. Just to make sure everything's working, I've got this hooked up to a power supply. This thing needs 12 volts, so I've got that set here. And if I turn it on, it should spin. I've got it temporarily clamped in place and I'm just gonna make sure that everything turns smoothly and everything before I actually bolt all that motor mount and all that stuff into place. <laughs> Even though there's a whole lot more to do before this is actually in place, I can't help but put the actual dome on here and just watch it spin. Let's do that. That's super cool though. Now that the dome is spinning, we're gonna move on to this giant hole in the back of R2. Now this is supposed to be an access panel. There's a whole body panel that is supposed to go on there which should be mounted to a door, which was made to fit in that opening. Unfortunately, once I got the skins on, the door doesn't quite fit in there anymore, and having it come in and out would be really difficult. So, I'm gonna take some scrap styrene and build out this shape a little bit, closing it in, and then make a new door that fits in that space, then attach this panel to that new door so it can come on and off. Here we've got the new door. I made this up yesterday and it's basically the same construction as the entire frame, all the stuff you've seen me do before. But I cut down these pieces, put in a new top plate, some new sides, and then this new door that slides in there. It's kind of tight, but it does fit all the way in and that's important. So next, we're gonna take this big back panel of the skins, which is all made up, and this is gonna get glued in place onto that removable section so that when the entire thing comes off, it will take this 
with it. These will be glued together. Now one of the problems here that I found when testing this out was that by putting on these outer skins first, I've ended up with some gaps. Up here at the top, it actually looks just fine. We've got about the normal size gap all the way around, but then down here on the bottom, the pieces kind of spread out. So you get more gap over here and then more on the other side. Unfortunately, there's not really anything I can do about that at this point. So I'm gonna have to just make this door up and then put in some filler pieces on the inside of the body to cover that gap. The glue is dried on this back panel, and so now R2 has a door that comes off and it takes the structure with it. This is really cool and it fits really nicely, but there are those gaps that I mentioned earlier down here and on this side. So what I've done is cut down some more pieces of the white styrene. I'm gonna take off this door and glue them right in here up against that edge to kind of fill the gap. And then I can even go back and paint this edge to make it look like it's aluminum, just to make it fade away even more. These pieces are also going to serve another purpose. They will be a place that I can put a mount for a magnet on this face and then that will hold that back panel door in place all the way up against it so there's no gap in this direction. Now that I've got these panels in, the plan to get this whole back section to stick on is to take one of these rare earth magnets, screw it into that face right there, and then take this piece of steel angle iron and glue it to the back of the door. Now you can see that they really, really grab, which is good the door will get pushed in and locked onto that magnet. So first, I'm gonna start by screwing the magnets into this piece of plastic. The JB Weld has set up on all these different points on the back of the door and it actually works out really well. Check this out. It holds in place, but once you snap it loose, you can get the whole thing out. These things also act as guides to help get it into the right position, which is pretty cool. Once you get it in there, the magnets kind of take over and snap it into place. This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN, and you may not think that you need to be using a VPN when you get on the internet, but honestly, you do. Every time you connect to the internet, your device is sending out all of your information to another server. And if you're on a VPN, it encrypts all of that information so nobody can get a hold of it. Especially if you're in a place like a coffee shop or a hotel, you're gonna be connecting to a public Wi-Fi, and you want all of your information encrypted, and that is exactly why you use a VPN. That way nobody can get a hold of your information, your passwords, any of the stuff that you type, in between your device and where it's going. But even if you're not in a public place, if you are at home, everything that goes out through your home internet connection goes through your ISP, which means they can see every single thing that they do. And unfortunately, sometimes they can sell that to other people to market to you. The way around that is to send all of your information through a virtual private network and that's where ExpressVPN comes in. There are some other advantages to using a VPN as well. Imagine you're trying to watch something on a streaming service and the content you wanna see is not available in your country. Well, through ExpressVPN, you can actually connect to a server in a different country, and that shows your location is there, so the streaming service will give you the content that you wanna see. But for me, honestly, the security and the safety of having my information encrypted on the internet is the biggest selling point. If you wanna find out more and find out how to get three months for free, go to expressvpn.com slash make stuff. Your safety and security online is worth it. Be sure to go check them out. For the past several weeks, I've been working on the hinges on R2-D2, and it's been surprisingly difficult to get all these hinges for these panels in the right place so that they can clear the body as they open and close. Because all of these hinges have to work on a curved surface, the hinge geometry is kind of interesting, and unfortunately, I had to cut out a lot of the interior structure to make room for the hinges to go. So now I have to go back and trim all these pieces up so that they will fit around the hinges and put them back inside. 
And then I also have to go back and add a servo and a mount to each one of these doors so that the electronic system can open and close them remotely. And then I also have to go back and build a back panel in each one of these cavities so that you can't see straight through them when one of the doors is open. But for now, these hinges are done, so I'm gonna move on to the hinges on the dome. The hinges for the dome panels are an entirely different beast because they actually need to work on a compound curve. This is in a dome, so it's got curves going in pretty much every direction. And I've been working for a long time now trying to get hinges mounted on the inside of this so that these panels can clear the opening when they flip out. I've had a huge amount of trouble with this, and I went onto the forums and asked some really helpful people about it. They've also had a lot of trouble with these hinges, and offered up some suggestions to make it work. This is the hinge that I had been trying to use, and other people have used it successfully, often by modifying it, but the big problem for me was the amount of slop in this joint right here. It doesn't look like a whole lot when I move it, but that amount of movement makes it so that the panel can't sit correctly and can't clear the opening when you flip it out. The alternative that a lot of people suggested on the forums was a 3D printed hinge. And this is one that was modeled specifically to be able to clear the kind of weird opening of the dome. This was printed in two separate parts. It goes together with a bolt and it has a built-in mount for the servo to activate the arm. The files also come with a little jig. You can print this out and use this to make sure that the hinge is put in the right place. I did a test print of one of these, put it in place with some hot glue to make sure it would work and it worked perfectly the first time. So I ended up printing out four more and I've gone ahead and assembled one of them, put on the servo and put in a little arm so that the servo can control the hinge. Now I've just got to glue these in place and the dome will look 100% finished. The dome is finally looking finished, really, on the outside. On the inside, it's got servos in place on the panels, it's got lights that actually work, but those things don't talk to each other, and they don't talk to anything else because he doesn't have a brain yet. I finally started working on the electronics to go inside of R2-D2, and I'm using a whole system that's been put together by the people on the Astromech forums. I'm gonna continue to work on this, try to get it figured out, and get it in place. This entire system is gonna be powered from one power source, and you can do that in a lot of different ways, but something I thought was really cool that a lot of people do on the forums is they use a battery system that they already have. I've already got a bunch of DeWalt tools, so I want to use these 20 volt batteries. And I actually found a simple adapter that lets you use these batteries and other tools. But the important thing about this adapter is that it lets you hook in right here. Then you have two terminals that you can tie into to actually connect the power to your system. So I just need to modify this thing a little bit so that I can put these wires on those terminals. With a little bit of soldering and some hot glue, now I've got an adapter that I can mount on the inside of R2-D2, and then when I wanna actually power him up, I can just take the batteries, drop them in, and then close up the whole thing. After he runs out of battery power, I can take it out, swap it out with another one, and since I have tons of these batteries and chargers, I can always have a lot of power to take with me anytime I take R2 anywhere. Once I got the battery adapter in place, I finally got power to the electronics that I was working on and was able to really flesh them out. I don't have them all done, but I definitely have a working prototype taking advantage of a piece of software called Shadow. This is a whole system that somebody put together on the forums, which includes an Arduino sketch that will help you control motors and sounds and a bunch of other stuff. Let me show you how I've got it laid out really quickly. There's a lot here and it looks crazy because the wiring is temporary, but let me walk you through it really quickly. The 20 volt battery goes to a switch so you can turn the whole system on. That goes to a power block, which sends that power out to the motor controller for the feet. It also sends it to a converter which knocks it down to 12 volts, and then we've got a block for 12 volts here as well. That goes into another converter that takes it down to five. So we've got three different voltages here that we can tie into. The 12 volt is feeding the Arduino that has a shield and a Bluetooth controller on it. It's also feeding a sound board. The output of that board is going into an amplifier, which is powered by 12 volts, and then connected to two speakers. 
The 12 volt is also controlling this head motor controller and this controls the spinning of the dome. And all of that is connected through Bluetooth to this PlayStation 3 Move Navigation Controller. The code for this whole system is already written. You can modify little pieces if you need to. But once you connect this controller through Bluetooth to the Arduino, everything just kind of works. You've got controls here for a bunch of different sounds. You can spin the motors using these controls. You can use the driving control up here to spin the feet motors. And this is a great place to start and I've made a huge amount of progress. This is a huge step forward and with what I have right now, I could actually put it inside R2 and it would roll around and make sounds and be awesome. But of course, there's still a bunch of other functionality that's not attached here yet. I haven't wired up the lights in the dome. I haven't wired up any of the servos for the panels to open. So that's gonna have to come in the next video. I was hoping to get the feet done in this video and I'm not even started on those yet, but luckily I made a lot of progress on the electronics instead. So I think to wrap this video up, I wanna put that board inside R2, hook it up to the dome and see if I can spin it around with a remote. Check this out. <laughs> that is super cool. All right, I think that's a pretty good place to wrap up this video. Thank you so much for checking this out. And in the next one, we're gonna take some more leaps forward on R2-D2. If you wanna go back and see the previous videos on this, we've got a playlist with all of those. And we have tons of other types of projects of all different types if you wanna check out. Be sure to hit subscribe if you're not already. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. And also in the last video, we got the dome really far along. Well, far flong, flong. This is a 12 volt motor, so I've got 12 volts going. Votes? 12, 12 votes. Oh boy. So I've got 12 volts going. Dang it, I did it again. Zero, 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 zero. Yeah, it's like pushing.